so hi, yeah. So, commitment, huh? Last night I was lying in bed with my boyfriend and I was like, dude, I think I'm totally half-winging this talk. Like, I didn't prepare half as much as I did. And he was like, yeah, was it maybe because the roof was on fire on Wednesday? I was like, well, yeah, of course, it kind of set me off track. But truth is that commitment is really a hard nut to crack for me. It's something that scares me. I don't want to commit to stuff. I don't want to take this freedom of way to choose everything I want to do at any moment. But today I'm going to try to solve this nut, to crack it. <clears throat> today I stand here as the president of Schwelle Vienna, but believe me, I wasn't born this way. Um, <laughs> some time ago, I was just a math student in Graz and I was really curious about different ways to express love. And I became part of this community, the part of the polyamory community, where people said that, that they could love more than one person. And the jealousy was something that one could get over. <coughs> so I started exploring this field. I fell in love. I fell in love with more than one person and it was great until I realized that I was really insecure and that I had a great capacity to feel jealous and enraged and to not sleep at night. I was faced with this challenge, with this great problem of being really anxious about my relationships. And whenever one is faced with a great challenge, <coughs> a person starts to look for solutions. <coughs> so that's what I did. I started to try different ways of love, meditation. I really got deep into hypnosis. Um, I started talking with a lot of people, from psychotherapists to shamans to people who just spent decades of being polyamorous. And I remember this talk with a friend of mine who would tell me, <coughs> when I asked him about, how can I trust someone if we're not exclusive? How can I trust someone if the person I love goes around dating someone else? And he told me that he realized that at some point he started trusting a person's character. He started trusting a person's nature because that's something that won't change. Affection might change. It, um, the capacity to have time, to have energy might change. But the nature of a person, the personality, what someone is at their core usually stays over time. So I tried that. I tried trusting in the nature of people, but after a while, I have to admit, I gave up. And I started changing um, again. And I moved to Vienna. In Vienna, one of my first nights, I stumbled into this great place. And I fell in love. I fell in love with the energy of the people. I fell in love with this attitude of celebrating life, of trying out new and different things, new and different approaches of how to connect and how to really live and love authentically. Um, <coughs> then New Year's Eve came along and everyone was looking back at what they had done the last year and what they, what they wanted to create in the next. And I pledged myself to support this place, so to support the idea of Schwelle the next year the best I could. I committed myself to put myself here wholeheartedly and try to support the team here the best I could. Back then I was a volunteer. In February, February I became a team member and on September I was elected president by the community which is really great. And I still feel really grateful 
to have been given this opportunity to create amazing workshops and events, to create this atmosphere of <coughs> sex positivity, to just let people be how they want to be and not how they should be. The great part about my job is that I have a lot of freedom and I can experiment. The not so great part is that <laughs> everywhere we try new things, different things, and at every place where a lot of people come together, there's one very logical consequence, and that's drama. <coughs> I had people shouting at me. I had people calling me names. I also faced a very classic shitstorm where people who didn't know me just bullied me, pretty much. <coughs> These challenges aren't easy, these adversities. But what I always try to, when something like this happens, is I take a look at my values. I take a look at my core beliefs. I take a look at what am I committed to. And of course I made mistakes. And of course I didn't handle situations the best way I could. But I always stay true to my values. <coughs> I always try to welcome people to this space, to give people an opportunity to be happy, to be authentic, to enable a place where people can feel really empowered and free. And I stick with that the best I can. So every time there's some new challenge, some new mountain to cross, I can see that in the end, it really makes me stronger. I can take this energy. I can take this moment to reflect and see where I stand and see if I still want to follow this path. And so far, I'm still standing. But so this was my individual experience with commitment. And of course, for this talk, I looked into a few statistics like what does science say? And there's a few cool things. There's, for example, this great statistic about what makes people who own companies, and especially entrepreneurs, what makes them happy. And so they divided people in two groups. The happy, the ones who said about themselves that they were happy, and the other ones who described themselves as unhappy. And they tried to find the dividing factor. And the thing was, the people who were unhappy, they tended to measure their own success in how many products they sold, how much money they made, how many likes they got. But the happy group, they tended to see success, to measure success in how much they could stand up for their own values, how much they were committed, and how much they were really able <coughs> to follow their vision. Then there's another study which goes more into the topic of relationships, like why do people stay together and others split up? <coughs> and they found that there's um, people who stay together because they want to, essentially, and there's people who break after, up after a time. And when you look at the different groups, it's really... Um, the moment when they move in together. Some people move in together because it just kind of happens and because it's <coughs> kind of the financial best thing to do. And then there's the people who move in together because they really want to. And it might not be easy, but they make this conscious decision together that they really want it. And it turns out that these people who make this conscious decision, this conscious commitment, that it's those who are really together for the long run. It's those that really stay together for much longer. So, so much for science. But <coughs> I really think that there is a great power in the things we commit to. One cannot achieve great things when we're not committed. You cannot win Olympia with some com without commitment, and you have to have got to have a great commitment to write a book, to 
achieve something really great, something outstanding, even against challenges. However, this New Year's Eve came along and I was considering, do I want to renew my commitment? Do I want to pledge myself to this amazing, amazing place again? And I looked deep into my heart and I found, no. I see there's a lot of pressure in our society to really perform, to have great success, to really do something with our lives. And we tend to forget, I tended to forget, that it was really me who this is all about. So I committed myself to myself. I committed myself to my happiness. And what I really learned from all this is that there's so many ways to express love and so many ways how commitments can take place. And it really makes one happy when you rather take up a commitment to your values in a job and not some outward goal. And for me myself, I found that what I want to commit to is not just a great vision, but far more, if I want to support this great vision anymore, I have to commit to one person, and that's me. Thank you.